sooner, everybody. My name's Harry James. Kyler Murray, the OU quarterback. It's official. Coming in to today. He has not lost to a team, a single team that he's played against. Oh, uh, ever since high school. Now, of course, in the original matchup for the Golden Hat, Texas took advantage by three. This time around, Oklahoma took advantage with a 39-27 victory over the Horns of Texas, earning them something way more important than a Golden Hat. What did it earn them? It earned them a chance at four straight. One, two, three, four. Big 12 championships. And more importantly, a chance to turn a conference championship and form it into a national championship where they will play Alabama on New Year's. A review of how they got there. In the Red River Reboot, 39-27 victory over the Longhorns. We'll review it next. Boomer Center 1982. Don't go away. Hit it, Barry. The man, the myth, the legend, the only one to make beat, wear, uh, beat Texas hat cool in the 80s, the one, Barry Switzer. Thank you so much, Coach. This time around, as we said, Oklahoma came out with the victory. Let's go to the stat boards first. We'll start in the passing game with Sam Ellinger. Ellinger, uh, for the passing game, had 349 through the air, two touchdowns, did have the interception. His longest completion of the night was 32 yards. As we talked about, speaking of a man, a myth, a legend. In high school football, Kyler Murray, he won in, in high school. Now he's winning in college. He, did, he won in college with his final conference college game, three 79 through the air, three touchdowns. He didn't have an interception. His longest completion was 54 yards. Running the ball, Sam Ellinger. Ellinger, the quarterback, is also kind of an option running back, kind of like what Blake Bell used to be for the Sooners. When it was all said and down, he had 15 selfies for 66 yards. Did have a couple of, did have two touchdowns in the in the ball game. His longest turn of the night was from 16 yards. Oklahoma, of course, they have a running back that can run around two. But he was pretty much pretty much kept in the pocket. So he's not your leading rusher for Oklahoma. But you know who is? The big guy from Georgia, Trey Sermon. Who at the end of the day, 18 carries, 71 yards, did have a touch down. His longest run of the night was from nine yards out. The wide receiver of the game for Texas, as they earned their way back into the conference, into this game since 2010, or 2009. We won it in 2010, 2009. The wide receiver, number nine, Colin Johnson. Uh, eight receptions, a buck 77 through the air, and a touchdown. His longest completion of the night was from 32 yards. While well, the Oklahoma leading receiver, C.D. Lamb, six, catch, six catches for uh, a buck 67 through the air, did score a touchdown. Uh, 54 of it came in one play as the longest reception of the night. Uh, defensively, Anthony Wheeler, 
Number 45, Anthony Wheeler for Texas, 12 tackles. Didn't have a fumble forced, recovered, or interception. And for Oklahoma, the Schooner Boomers, again, one final time for Curtis Bolton, 10 catches. Didn't have a forced fumble, fumble recovered, or interception. The kicking game, Dicker the Kicker, earned his nickname last time out in this series. Uh, didn't kick a field goal today, though, 0 for 0, 0%, zero and did not qualify. Got an NA, non-applicable uh, assessment for this ball game, not kicking. On the other side, the Sibes, 3 for 3 for the senior, kicker and punter. Kicking the ball wise, uh, three for three for 100 uh, percent. Kicked field goals from uh, 20, 27, and a distance, and a distance that ended in a distance long of 31 yards. Punting for Texas, uh, Ryan Bjugnesic, four punts, 37.2 in average, 46 along, one landed inside the 20 yard line. And one for the touchback. Oklahoma, the Sooner Roamers, 43. Austin Seibert, he does them both. Uh, he punts and kicks. Three for three on field goals. Punts seems two. Punts, two of them. 40.5 in average. 46 along. Zero inside the 20. And zero touchbacks for the Sooners of Oklahoma. So there's that. So let's get you to the ball game and how we got to a 39-27 rematch victory for Oklahoma and to be honest it looked like it wasn't gonna happen at first Texas after Oklahoma declines the ball for the second half Texas takes the ball the distance uh, the distance does include a 16 yard touchdown run for Sam Ellinger with 1138 left touchdown Texas seven nothing horns Oklahoma uh, not a touchdown, but they do get on the board with a field goal by Austin Seibert. 7-3, Texas, uh, with 7.37 left to end the first quarter. Go straight to the second quarter, where Oklahoma didn't really want, didn't really take the lead, but kind of kicked a field goal to keep them in position to where they could the next possession with a 20-yard, uh, or with a 27-yard with a field goal up and good. 7-6, but Texas still owns the game. 14-50 left in the half. Sam Ellinger gives them the two-score lead back with a touchdown and two-point conversion with a three-yard touchdown run of his own with 11-22 left. Horns up. But just as quickly, the horns went down because of this play. Kyler Murray, the quarterback, a 28-yard touchdown pass to C.D. Lamb. 14-13, Texas, though, still leads because of the two field goals by Oklahoma, by Oklahoma instead of touchdowns. But there's still 5-0-1 left in the half. Then, Kyler does it again. Kyler Murray, 28-yard touchdown pass to Grant Calcutta. It is now 20 to 14 Oklahoma, their first lead in the ball game with just 18 seconds left in the second half. And they'll take it to halftime. Texas Oklahoma actually has momentum now in the second half. And they add to the momentum. Trey Sermon, the Sermonator, gets a uh a touchdown run of his own to go in. 27-14 Sooner Boomers. 12-0-1 left in the game. Here we go, boys. Then, Sam Ellinger, not going to let his team down, uh, takes the uh, assuming possession down the field and finds uh, Colin Johnson for a 29-yard touchdown. 8 47 left. It is 27-21 Oklahoma. They're still ahead in the ball game. But not for long. Because there's 244 left. Sam Ellinger 
five-yard touchdown to Will Jordan Humphreys. 27-27 at this time. Tie ball game with 2.44 left. The reason why it's not 28-27, a blocked P-A-T. So a lot of credit. Two huge plays this year for the Sooners have come down to special teams that Frank Beamer's son Shane Beamer has really been trying to get the guys on. Of course, everyone remembers the first play of the season. The first one I'm talking about, the block punt. Uh, first game of the season against Florida Atlantic. And then this one, a block P-A-T that ended up uh, hitting the upright. No good. So 27-27 because if not, we'd have to go for two eventually. But since we don't, we're all tied up at 27s heading into the fourth. And then in the fourth, it's all about the Sooners from here on, baby. 31-yarder, uh, field goal-wise, sorry, from Austin Seibert. 43, Austin Seibert, up and good. 30-27 to 27 Sooner Boomers with 12-37 left. Then, after uh, C.D. Lamb. Drops the football, gives Texas possession to deep territory. And you know what? It may have been a fumble, but you know who ends up capitalizing off of it? The defense of Oklahoma. What? The defense actually showed up? Well, yes, they did. Two defensive scores last week. They got one this week. This one is safety on Sam Ellinger. And it was by Trey, number six for the Sooners, Trey Brown. 32-27, Oklahoma with 8-27 left. The nail in the coffin for the Sooners. And to really put them in the playoffs, one final score for a conference play for uh, Kyler Murray. Number one, Kyler Murray, 18-yard touchdown to number 80, Grant Calcaterra, 39-27 Sooners. Two minutes left on the clock. Two-score game for the Sooners. The Longhorns did work their way down the field to try to make it a one-score game, as it has been in this rivalry the last couple of times. Didn't happen, as I believe it was Robert Barnes that picked him off in the end zone. Or um, in, in the red zone. Not in the end zone, in the red zone. <clears throat> Riley's right call of the game. Well, there were plenty of them. But what about uh, the 28-yarder uh, to Grant Calcaterra in the first half? Uh, that one in the first half gave Oklahoma the lead after trailing and not playing really, really Oklahoma Sooner football for the first two quarters. That touchdown I'm talking about gave them the lead. Speaking about... And speaking of giving the lead, the uh, big deal for McNeil defensively was the number six, Trey Brown out of Arkansas. His sack on Sam Ellinger for the safety came in the fourth quarter. That's your defensive play of the game. That's it for the football first version, baby. For conference football, that wraps it up for the Sooners. The next opponent on the list was announced earlier today will be the big bad other Crimson of Alabama. That game will be played in, drumroll please, South Beach, Miami, Florida. The, other, uh, the first of two semifinals. The other semifinal, the one in Arlington or Texas Cowboy Stadium will be the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the Clemson Tigers. The winner of these two games, of course, heading to Santa Clara, California. The new home of, I believe, the Rams, if I'm not mistaken. Not only that, but it will also be the home of the National Championship game. All right, guys, we'll preview Alabama in a few weeks. Give me some time to do some insight, do some deep thinking about this matchup. Till then, my name's Harry James. You know how to find me. I'm on Facebook, James Taylor. Also Twitter, at Hype Man Harry. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. 
Big, four straight Big 12 championships, baby. One final time. They do it convincingly, convincingly do the Sooners by 12, 39, 27, Oklahoma, and earn the 2018 Big 12 Conference Championship. Texas you can keep that golden hat. We got what was important. We got the trophy and the wins. I'm out of here, guys. Thanks. Boomer Sooner.